I've reviewed several Escape Room games by the developer MC2 Games on this channel, and while In the Space Escape Room is a strikingly similar game, it's made by a new developer, Adrian Systems. It's actually so similar to the MC2 game series. It uses the same interface, sounds, visual assets, and even the same style of Steam achievement icons that it almost feels a bit like fan fiction. And while it has its good points, there are unfortunately a lot of flaws in the game's design and execution that left me a little frustrated. But completing and releasing an entire game is no small feat, especially for a new developer, and I want them to keep making more games. So in this video, I'm going to look at the shortcomings of In The Space and how they might be improved upon for future releases. I should note here that I played a pre-release version of the game, and it's possible that some of these issues may be addressed when it's fully released. First off, In The Space has some of the same flaws as many other virtual escape rooms. The controls are extremely clunky and tend to induce motion sickness due to motion blur and smoothing which can't be disabled. The mouse sensitivity is also way too low, even when set to maximum. There are a number of puzzles that rely on colors, which may be difficult to distinguish for many colorblind players. The text in the game contains many typos and spelling and grammatical errors. The puzzles range from so easy they hardly qualify as puzzles to fairly challenging, though the ones I got stuck on were usually difficult because of a failure in the clues rather than genuine complexity in the puzzles themselves. And as is all too often the case with this type of game, the story and setting are extremely simple and feel tacked on. The puzzles and the story have nothing to do with each other. I think this in particular is a real shame. Narrative games can be very engaging, but when the mechanics of the game are at odds with its setting and story, it pulls you right out of your immersion. It makes no sense for there to be a set of puzzles relating to playing cards, pictures of animals, and Picross that give you the password to a keypad on the door in a space station. The thing is, if you really just want to make a series of puzzles, you can do that. You don't need to tack a story onto it. Plenty of games have done very well just making abstract puzzles. A puzzle game with a well-integrated story is great, but I'd prefer just a series of puzzles with no story to one with a simplistic story tacked onto it. But none of these flaws are unique to this particular game. They are unfortunate staples of the Unity-based escape room games on Steam at this point. Still, I will keep hoping that one of these games will break the pattern soon. Aside from my usual complaints about these games, In The Space had a few other issues which I imagine might be attributed to the developer's lack of experience. First off, the game does not appear to autosave at any point, something I discovered to my frustration the first time I closed and reloaded the game. Be sure to save manually if you try this one out. There's also a lot of repetition in the puzzles throughout the various rooms. The developer seemed especially fond of sliding tile puzzles, which I personally dislike, so that was a little frustrating. Although, if you like sliding tile puzzles, you're in for a treat. In some cases, the clues were given in a confusing order. For example, a clue might be given which is intended for the next room, not the one you're in, but it appears to have something to do with the puzzle you're currently working on. This type of red herring caused me to get stuck on a puzzle for half an hour, and I wound up having to ask a puzzle-loving friend of mine for help to move forward. In one room, I obtained the missing piece of a puzzle based on playing cards, which unlocked it for solving, but I couldn't figure out how to solve it. It turned out that I had to solve yet another puzzle to get the hints required for it, but by that point I had grown frustrated, having assumed that the solution must require some outside knowledge of some specific card game, and I'd wasted half an hour trying to brute force it. To the developer's credit, at no point was outside knowledge required to solve any puzzles, which is a mistake plenty of other escape room games have made. I'm looking at you every game that ever had a chess puzzle. I did find a couple of puzzles that seemed totally unsolvable without the use of the hint system, which should never be the case. I applaud the developer for including a hint system for most of the puzzles, but they should never be mandatory for progress. And if they weren't meant to be, then something has gone wrong with some of the clues. One issue I encountered several times was poor placement of the interactivity prompts. There are two such prompts, with identical icons to the MC2 game's escape rooms. An open circle can be clicked to look closely at something. This is usually used to center a static hint on the screen. A puzzle piece opens one of the puzzles or other interactive elements such as keycard readers. However, sometimes these were placed in really odd or frustrating positions that made them easy to miss or difficult to click. One puzzle in the final room had both a circle and a puzzle piece icon in front of it, but the puzzle piece didn't show up until you stood in a very precise location. This caused me to assume the puzzle was actually just a static clue and waste a lot of time trying to work out what it was for. It was only when I happened to walk into the right spot and the puzzle icon showed up that I understood why it hadn't made any sense. Overall, I found the first couple of rooms to have the most thought out and original puzzles. The last couple of rooms felt really quite rough in comparison and not well tested. In fact, one of the final puzzles, a gear puzzle, wouldn't let me interact with it until I'd obtained the missing piece, a yellow gear. 
Yet, when I'd obtained it and solved the extremely simple puzzle, there was a yellow gear left over. These sorts of issues, combined with the repeated types of puzzles, give me the impression that perhaps the developer bit off a little more than they could chew in terms of the scale of the game, and found themselves rushing the later areas to try and just get it finished. So, In the Space is, in the end, a fairly rough game. It does have its good points. Most of the puzzles are standard fare for this type of game, and players who are just looking for more of the same type of experience they get from the MC2 game series is likely to enjoy it. Some of the puzzles are fairly clever and original, and despite the hurdles along the way, I was able to complete it, so there's nothing totally broken about the game. I would absolutely encourage the developer to keep making games, and to be sure to have them thoroughly tested by multiple people to avoid some of the issues I encountered with this one. Above all, I'd encourage them to find their own style, rather than mimicking the one MC2 Games has been using for years. You'll be better off establishing your own recognizable image, rather than trying to compete with an established company with more experience. Thank you for inviting me to try out your game, Adrian Systems. May you keep making games, and may each one be better than the last. Oh, hi. Sorry, what, what's that? You'd like to see an example of how a narrative escape room can integrate its puzzles with its story in a way that doesn't feel tacked on? Oh, um, let's see. You can always check out my page on Planet Minecraft, where you can find my escape room maps. Map for now, but the second one is nearing completion and should be released in the near future. Also check out my page on Itch, where you can find my mini ARGs, which do the same thing, but without the escape room bit. All of these are totally free, so take a look if you like narrative games and logic puzzles. Ooh. I also want to say an extra big thank you to my patrons, who stuck by me over this past very difficult year. I can't tell you how much your support means to me. Take care out there, everyone.